Welcome back to Digi Bros. What's up? Uh, at the end of the last episode, Playing. I remember. Give me no time to settle in, check my phone or nothing. We switched episodes real fast. <laughs> You're going to get in the cannon. Jesus. You can check your phone during a cutscene or something. <laughs> um, you were, at the end of the last episode, you reminded me of something else I did in the last few weeks that uh, you might find interesting to hear about. Um, really? Yeah. Really? Well, I said might. Really? <laughs> Because you sounded interested at the la end of the last episode. Okay. So, um, I put together a a giant fucking spreadsheet trying to figure out what was oh, the most yeah. popular season in anime history. The, the fucking Magnum spreadsheet. Yes. And I want to do another one that's for the the best year, like what what is critic the most critically acclaimed year in anime history. That oh, one will shit. be probably harder. But, um... But the the most popular year in anime history, and I'm doing this by way of my anime list. So it's not it's not it's not worldwide. It's not accurate to like everybody. It's just for the the, the people who have my anime list accounts, which I think make for a pretty good barometer of the Western anime fandom in general, yeah. or at least like the U.S. and and English speaking anime fandom, um, because you know they like what. What is popular on Mal and the way stuff is rated on Mal always seems to reflect what is generally consensus, yeah. you know. Um, it obviously doesn't reflect consensus. Japan, because if it reflected Japan, then the most popular anime would probably be like, uh, what's it called? Sazai-san or something, you know, or Dorimon. But, um, but anyway, so I went back through and I was looking at every season in anime history and determining like how many popular shows came from that season. And it, it doesn't count stuff that goes through multiple seasons. I'm only counting the season where the show started, right? Mm. So what I realized is that, I mean, I, I kind of knew this already, but way more shows are coming out now than ever before. And therefore, way more of them have the opportunity to become popular. So, you know, the last few years are by far the most popular years with the most popular seasons. But, um, the, the single biggest season in anime history was fall of 2012. Whoa. Which is funny, because that's during the period that I was not watching anime at all. Wow. It's like the one period Way of time... Way to miss the boat, bro. ...where I wasn't watching anime, and it was the most popular season. Although, it didn't have any one show that was, like, crazy huge. It just had a lot of kind of big shows. Yeah. This was the season where Psychopath came out, and that was the biggest show of the season. Um, mm -hmm. It had The Pet Girl of Sakura So, which you've probably never heard of because it's a romantic comedy. Uh, Sounds pretty lame. I think it had the first, ha the first season of... Um, Love comedy snafu, which I hate. That sounds uh, awful. It, it had a bunch of shit. And, um, yeah, it was just like, oh my god, this looks like a nightmare. Oh, shit, I gotta remember how to is, do this. Do you have to get all these? Yeah, there's a certain order you have to do it in. It, it just, it looks shit. like the end of Gurren Lagann nah. in here. Yeah. Uh, there. so anyway, yeah. 2012 fall was the biggest season, but the, the second biggest season, which is more interesting because it's carried almost entirely by its two biggest shows, is the fall season of 2006, in which Death Note and Code Geass started at the same time. Oh my god. Now, Death That's Note... That's a pretty dope season. Death Note is by far the most popular anime of all time, according uh -huh. to my anime list. It, has, it appears on over 700,000 lists. Holy shit. The only shows that appear... That's fucking nuts. The, the only shows that come close, Sword Art Online Season 1 and uh, and um, Code Geass Season oh, 1 and, uh, and Attack on go. Titan all have close to 600,000 lists, but yeah. not quite. Death Note has over 700,000 lists, so it kind of dwarfs them. Yeah. Biggest show ever, according to my anime list. So that season, which has both of those shows, which are both huge... Like, almost on the grounds of those two shows alone is the big second biggest season of all time. Uh -huh. But in general, if you go if you go by year, the biggest year is 2014, then 2012, then 2013, then 2011, you know, like, it's all yeah. the recent years. Because those years have so many more shows. And the biggest thing that's changed over time is that we now have shows coming out in the fall and winter. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, not summer and winter. And that just didn't really happen. I see. If you go back to the 90s, everything came out in the spring or fall. 
everything, uh-huh. no matter what. Whether it was a, a 300 episode show, whether it was a 12 episode show, or whatever. I mean, there weren't really a lot of 12 episode shows back then. It was usually you think 26. The, yeah, the average was longer, was it? Right, and that's why because yeah. it used to be that most shows were 26 episodes long, and therefore they went through to. It's funny because like all growing up, I had always thought you know everything was gonna be. Like, most animes were 26 episodes, and I feel like these days it's mostly, like, 12 and 13. And yeah, that's exactly the truth. Like, it used to be that most shows were 26, and then you had the ones that were 13 or 12 if they were smaller, self-contained shows. Yeah. But the thing is, the shows that are getting 12-episode seasons now are the ones which would have been 26-episode shows back in the day. Because, mm-hmm. like, it used to be, if you had a 13-episode show, it was, like, Serial Experiments Lane, or Boogie Pop Phantom, or, you know, so, like... These small shows that were made for 12 or 13 episodes, you know, often original shows, usually not adaptations of shit. And, like, if you had a manga adaptation of a popular series, it was guaranteed 26 to maybe 50 episodes. And now we've got shows that are, like, that seem like they would be sure things that are getting 12-episode seasons and then we wait for a second season. Noragami is my favorite example. Because, like, I watched the first four episodes of that. It was hugely popular. It came out at the start of last year. Uh. Um, 12-episode manga adaptation. The second season's about to come out next season. I see. So that means there was, like, almost two years between the the two seasons. But when I watched it, I was like, this seems like an obvious success. Like, of course this show was going to be successful. It was Studio Bones. It was the kind of show that would appeal to, like really strongly to girls but also has enough appeal that guys would could probably get into it yeah. you know it's like an action show it's very mid 2000s feeling like it seemed like such an obvious success but they only made 12 episodes and then held off for a year and a half you know and i'm like man that's so weird but that's like that's the landscape now tokyo ghoul tokyo ghoul had a 13 episode season another 13 episode season if you look at tokyo ghoul do you not think that's gonna be huge yeah. Like, immediately. Yeah. I think that's... Because I think when that season was happening, that was what we said in our first impressions thing, right? Like, because we were doing vlogs. Uh-huh. Do you, like... Oh, man, remember? were we doing vlogs? Wow. Yeah, we were doing vlogs of anime at the time. And, like, mm. Tokyo Ghoul was the one that we were like, this is gonna be the big yeah. show. And it was the big show. Because <laughs> it's it obvious. It was huge. And yet, it was a 13-episode season followed by another one, you know? And so, like... It's just weird to, to look at that happening when you look yeah. at anime history and it was never like that. But because of that, Even now we've got... the fact that Attack on Titan Season 2 hasn't come out yet. Well, I think that's partly because the manga, yeah. they had to wait for more manga to be out. And also, I think they're milking it. And also, I think it's a problem with the studio. Because Attack on Titan had production issues yeah. where, um, from what I've heard, there was parts during, during the airing of Attack on Titan where they were tweeting... To f- try to find animators. Uh-huh. Like, we're talking full-on Shirobako episode 12 running around the city looking for oh animators level of unfinished show. And, like, there's stretches in Attack on Titan. When I when I was uh, making my video about uh, my, my parody review of it, yeah. I downloaded, like, episode 17 or so. And it's one where, like... Armin and two other people are, like, riding horses out in, like, this green countryside and, like, they get attacked by titans or whatever. And they meet the female titan, right? Yeah. And I was, like, compressing footage and there's, like, this shot of the three of them from behind on their horses, like, where the horses are just kind of moving up and down. And it takes up, like, four minutes of the episode. Like, they Good keep Lord. cutting back to it. And it's like, they're just giving exposition while riding on horses. On swim. And it's just going forever. And I was like, wow, this is not even animated. Like, they're just bouncing <laughs> up and down for minutes on end throughout this episode, you know? And, like, there's parts, there's one, f- um, like, frame or one shot in the show where, like, a titan hits the ground and, like, a bunch of bricks come up. And the bricks are purple because they had not had time to color them yet. It was the storyboard colors, or like the key animation colors. It just, like the whole rest of the frame is colored, but the bricks (laughs) exploding is still at the key animation stage. It hasn't been colored in. So yeah, like Attack on Titan had production issues. I'm sure they want more of the manga to come out. There's probably the issue that the manga is disappointing. And then there's been a million other tie-in things. You know, there's been like, they've recompiled the show into movies. There's been a live action movie, they've been releasing video games, you know, uh, and I feel like the incentive is to keep the hype going as long as it can go. Yeah. You know, I think that, um, I think that's a big part of what the current 
anime landscape is, is like, they're not just splitting up shows because they're not sure if it'll succeed, they'll also do it because the hype is there and they want to build more hype. And I think that's why the rebuild movies take so fucking long to come out, because they're building you know, like, they're, they're, they're marketing so much out of it, where it's taken ten fucking years to make four movies because they want it to take as long as possible, because it stays relevant and it stays being bought. So, um, I wouldn't be surprised if that's why Titan is taking so fucking long, um, at least part of it. Uh -huh. And also it's possible that, well, I was gonna say it's possible Tetsuro Araki had other work lined up, but he hasn't done anything since then. True. He has another show that's planned, but, um, hasn't come out yet. Because, like, that's what happened with uh, Shiro Bako. Like, I don't think they expected the show to be super successful. And it was it was kind of successful. And people kept asking for a season two. But, like, the director of Shiro Bako already has, like, years worth of work lined up. Yeah. Like, he's a popular director. You know, he did Prison School just now. He's about to do uh, something next season. I don't remember. But, yeah, like, he already had a bunch of work ahead of him. So, mm -hmm. they, uh, they couldn't do it. But, yeah, um... Anyways, the point I was getting back to, summer and winter were never big seasons. If you yeah. go back to the 90s, literally nothing came out in summer and winter. Like, nothing. No shows. Like, yes. absolutely zero. Everything came out during the fall and spring. And then if you go to the early 2000s, each season, like, you slowly see, like, um, like the really early 2000s would be, like, 12 new shows came out in the fall and, and spring. And, like, six new shows came out in the summer and winter. Uh -huh. And it went that way pretty much up until when Death Note and Attack on Titan came out. And I think anime just got more popular in general to, like, yeah. make more shows. And so then you had where you had, like, 25 to 26 shows coming out in the, in the spring and fall. And then, like... 10 to 12 shows coming out in the summer and winter yeah. then you get to like the 2010s and you got 40 fucking shows coming out in the spring and fall oh, 40 shows co uh, um you know 25 shows coming out in the spring and winter but then the last like three years it's just 45 new shows every season yeah. no matter what there's 45 new shows jesus so like summer and winter there's a lot of anime summer and winter are now the same as spring and fall like there's no like the, the 26 episode shows still usually come out in the spring and the fall uh -huh. like you know last fall we had shirobako parasite uh you know shit like that and then this this spring we had uh kofuku graffiti i mean not that um shokugeki no soma um yeah. ori monogatari you know but nonetheless shitloads of new shows come out so this summer season compared to most summer seasons is really good like there's been plenty of pretty good anime you know notwithstanding the fact that shokugeki no soma still coming out you had like um gangsta you had jitsu wa watashiwa i liked it um i had to look at my list again school live uh, or gako garashi as it's called yeah. uh fuck a bunch of good shit take my word for it it's a great season compared to most summer seasons yeah so yeah, um, oh, Minda looks so super weird with the helmet on. Ew. That is, that is really weird. Yes. <laughs> Gross. Do you have any questions for me about anime no history? <laughs> oh yeah, there's one thing I I need you th before I forget. I need you to f help me film a thing. About, oh great. Uh, Ava, because Evangelion on on October fourth, it's gonna have its twentieth anniversary uh -huh. of when the first episode came out. And I want to talk about how, through making this chart that I'm talking about, I found, I, I basically discovered that Ava might as well have created the idea of original TV anime. Uh-huh. Also, that face was terrifying. Yes. I just had to make note of that. Like, <laughs> I, I, I was stuck on it for a second. Um, original TV anime did not really exist outside of mecha shows. Until the 90s. Uh-huh. And I'm, I'm looking... Like, I was looking through anime history and, like, all of the big shows, all the shows that anybody knows about are all adaptations. It's all, like, long-form shonen yeah. adaptations like Dragon Ball, Ranma, and fucking Yu Yu Hakusho. Or it's world masterpiece theater shows, which are all adapted from old books, you know? Uh -huh. You've got, like, all these adaptations. The only really, like, noteworthy uh, non-adaptation shows are, like, Gundam... Yeah. Other shit by Studio Sunrise. They had a bunch of robot shows. Macross. And, uh... 
and some superhero, like transforming superhero shows by Tatsunoko, and that's it. Yeah. That's all that there was for like noteworthy original anime on TV. Kind of ridiculous. Because all the original stuff was OVAs in the and 80s. movies. In movies, yeah. like not even as much movies as OVAs, like. Because OVAs were, you know, like, that was the whole appeal of OVAs, is you could make an original idea yeah. and, you know, pour as much time and effort into it as you wanted and release it on video. So, like, OVAs were a huge boom in the 80s. But then in the early 90s, OVAs kind of went to shit, where, like, uh -huh. no one had the money to really produce good OVAs, and, like, a lot of shitty ones started coming out. And so, like, in, like, 1990, you have, uh, uh, like, Gynax... They had done one TV show, which was Nadia, The Secret of Blue Water, which is technically an adaptation of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Yeah. I mean, it's like a loose adaptation, but it's still an adaptation. But then, like, Ava comes out, and, like, it's it's the first successful original TV anime that's not made for kids or just a mech show made wow. to sell toys. Like, it was, it was the fucking first. I couldn't believe it. Like, you had, like... One year prior, Metal Fighter Miku came out, but it wasn't successful, so, yeah. like, it's not the same. And then as soon as Ava hits, you start getting, like, su first of all, Sunrise making riskier shows that aren't just mecha. You have, yeah. like, they make Vision of Escaflone, which is a mecha show, but it's, like, a fantasy shoujo mecha show. You've got um, Cowboy Bebop comes out. You've got Serial Experiments Lane comes out. You got, like, all these weirder, more experimental shows, and then, like, as you get into the early 2000s, they just keep getting more more out there, you know? And it's like, Ava, Ava did it! They created the idea of original TV anime. Yes. So, like, when people talk about how influential Ava is, I don't think anyone realizes, like, whoa! It was, like, the the one that, set, that made it a thing. Utena, Very you know, clean. after Ava. Yes. You know, like, what do you, like... How could Utna have ever happened if Ava hadn't happened first? You yeah. know, like when I look at anime history that way, it's like every shoujo anime was an adaptation, you know, until you get Utna, which is like a bunch of Sailor. I feel like it's a bunch of Sailor Moon staff literally watch Ava and go, let's do that for girls and make <laughs> Utna. Like, it's yeah. hard not to picture it that way when you look at it, you know, when you look at the history of it. So, um, I found that completely fascinating. Like, having known for 15 years that Ava is a really influential show, I never realized how much it was, like, the first of its kind, you know? Yeah. Not just that it's a psychological mecha series, but that it's an original TV anime at all. Yeah. Um, and now we, like, expect original TV anime, and we get mad when there is none, you know? We're always complaining about how there needs to be more. And the people making it are the same people who are making it in the 90s. So clearly there's there's only so many people who really care about it. Um, well, I stretched yeah. that topic out long enough. I've been talking <laughs> for two whole episodes, so you're going to have to bring the topic. Definitely, the okay. Since you've just been <laughs> I'm like falling asleep now. I'm just like, what am I, I doing? I'm trying to, <laughs> what is my life? <laughs> not contributed anything. What do I contribute to I you ranting about anime history? I'm, I, I have know. nothing to add to that. All right. Next time on Digibrew. Sweet. Oh, I gotta pause and stretch. My brain is shut off. Oh, you're getting to the end of that. I was just like, I'm really, I'm really just like dozing off. I was trying to see if I could stretch it to the whole 20 minutes because I didn't want to start a topic at the end. Uh.